can be a nice one. Exactly Fold it really nicely, and just iron it down, and then we'll start stitching it up here. As soon as I get it ironed all the way down. Set now to stitch the hem. Very exciting. Yeah, so we got a couple people in here.
tight seam and uh, or nice tightly folded up and ironed down so it sticks in place and I'm just going to start stitching. Tell you that you would be better off with counsel. Get the first couple of stitches, and it seems to well. Never mind, maybe I spoke too soon. It just tangled up. I don't know why it's uh, doing this on this one. I may be uh, pulling a little too fast or something like that. It seems to bunch up a lot. This guy is. Uh, that might Catching on my thing over here. There we go. So, already we've got, got a couple inches in and they're looking pretty good, I guess. Um, I'm going to go ahead and enlarge the camera. Yeah, we'll do that. And then, so then you can see the stitching on the uh, background, right? How about that? Let's do this. Uh, transform. Put the screen. And on this. How about that? That's a little better. There. Once you get it started, then it's just a matter of rolling along with it. It's just repetition until it's done. I'm starting to get to the point where I'm 
being able to see these as flags and not just pieces of fabric, which is kind of cool. edges get done then, uh, then I'll be able to do the, uh, the reinforcement on the side and the ropes. I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be kind of fun. Uh, just because it's, uh, it's going to be sort of cool and I like mixing, like this would be cool to mix the, uh, you know, it's all this fabric but then mixing in rope and twine and stuff and it's just fun. To, and I think even leather I'm going to use to uh, I don't know what that's called at the top. There's a uh, like an eye that I'm going to form up there for the halyard to attach. And uh, I think I figured out this afternoon how I'm going to do that. Um, but it's, it's just fun to mix up these different materials and techniques for putting them all together. Kirk's trying so hard to convince this guy to get a lawyer and the dude just isn't hearing him. You know, to the guy's credit, he did just draw a uh, mistrial by a hung jury out of a pro se defense in a murder trial in what he says is a corrupt town. But he's got a disinterested, or maybe that's not the right word, something like that, like a guy who doesn't have a, he doesn't have a dog in his, uh, telling him, hey man, you did all right, you could do better if you get a professional to handle this part of it for you, and the dude just keeps talking over him. did just finish a six week or three week trial for his life uh, on his own and didn't lose so he does know something there's a stark contrast between him and say Daryl Brooks and his pro se defense he, uh, these are two very different personalities at work ah. so often like to just stretch it out and it helps it seems to help even out the stitches but they're they're kind of nice looking let me see if I can hold these up I think you can see these but they're kind of nice um, these will be invisible when the thing's done uh, you know just um, I think tomorrow I'm going to dial this black so you won't even see this stitching I'm just doing it neat because uh, it should be done neatly but you know it makes it stronger and it's just how it's supposed to be done, but um, it should become invisible.
And then we get to do the cool part, which is the skull and bones. And then it becomes, you know, like right now, it might as well be a, I don't know, a handkerchief or a tablecloth or something. But, you know, once I get the skull and bones on, we've got a pirate flag. That's going to be cool. And uh, I'm looking forward to the painting part, too. I'm going to wait to do that until it's completed. And do it all a piece, you know. Um, let's see here. I'm going to get this. I'm going to pull this knot. I need to barely grab that. It's so tiny. Uh huh. <laughs> I have literally heard Kurt say that. So you are not in charge. So I know Kurt's position on this. too fast and that causes it to spin and twist up so maybe I just have to go a little more slowly than I'm used to damn dude we did it again all right yeah I'm definitely well, it's twisting and I'm going too fast. So I need to slow down and I'm going to twist it. So maybe just go like this. Get some of that twist get out. Definitely going slower leads to fewer tangles, I think. So maybe I'll just have to slow myself down. I get, you know, we've got a whole bunch of it to do. I think I'm just I was trying to go a little too fast and to uh, just zip along here. But this pace, I think, I mean, my stitches are nice and even. These, these look pretty good, so I'm just going to keep at this pace. And, uh, Maybe it'll take an extra hour or something to do this, but it'll be worth it because 
I'll have a nicer result and fewer hang-ups along the way. a couple of days of this trial on Kirk's channel and his own civil law and then uh, some of it today on potentially Criminal's channel and his stream but on his I came in just after they announced the mistrial. I missed that part. I didn't know what was going on. This is a case out of uh, Key West, Florida. There was a, uh, it's called the Treehouse Neighbors Murder, I guess. Uh, apparently there was this Sort of, sort of shack where people were able to live for a small amount of money and they, you know, these folks were hanging out there doing drugs and drinking beer and enjoying the weather in Key West. And uh, somebody came in and robbed them and beat them up and murdered one of them. And this guy was accused of it. He maintains his innocence he also maintains that there's a some kind of a conspiracy of maybe every branch of government around there to help frame him and a lot of incompetence too i think the uh, lead detective on the case got fired and demoted and you know doesn't work as a doesn't even work for the department and i think that's what happened and, um, and she testified, I watched her testimony, she was, I was not impressed. I, I certainly wouldn't want her protecting people I love from bad guys. She, uh, she didn't know what she was doing. Um, did appear to me. Anyway. And then, uh, <clears throat> apparently, there were other problems with the case, but this guy, I think, fired his attorneys and represented himself and he fought me to a mistrial because the uh, jury couldn't decide guilty or not guilty. So, so, you know, the parts I saw, the state didn't prove the case to me. Not even approaching it with reasonable, I mean, reasonable doubt when it didn't even come into it. it was just, there's just nothing to hang the case on as far as I could tell. The testimony of one guy who had reasons to testify in the way he did. And that was it. There was no, from what I saw, any evidence apart from that testimony. You know, but, yeah. so, he just, the mistrial was just this afternoon. And this, he's already doing this interview. Which I don't know if it's a great idea because he's got, they're retrying him, I think, this in March. So I don't know if it's a done it. I've got a, where, oh boy, I'm tangled up around my button here. So I'll drop the needle. Let's see here. There. Um, you know, I wonder if they'll use this interview against him, you know, if he says something here. But he hasn't said anything other than, well, I know I'm innocent and they're all correct. Really, you know, that's what it sounds like. So I'm not sure they can do anything with that. But the state did not cover itself in glory during the parts of the trial I saw. It looks like a case that should not have been brought to my, to my mind. I'm not a legal expert, but just as a citizen, I would like to think that the guys that they're trying for murder, darn it, uh, they have some evidence against us. Didn't seem to have evidence. It's kind of weird that yeah, way. They, they usually the were soft, you know. Okay, 
let's fold this again. So sometimes as you're working it, the uh, seams will come unfolded and you just tuck it back in there and stitch over it. That's what I'm going to do here. Starting to get used to this smaller needle. The whole time I was sewing the tent, I used a needle two or three times the size of this one and, uh, and much thicker thread. And, uh, this requires a bit more finesse. Fine motor control. It's working. Steady stitching. It's looking nice, I think. The uh, stitches look nice and even. It's kind of cool. But I'm already looking forward to the uh, skull and bones part. It's going to be cool. Just because it, I mean, that's the. That's the real dramatic piratey part of it, you know? That's what makes it fun. Although this, I always like details like this, you know? It's a pirate flag, but then if you look at the edge, you say, oh, okay, now they do that part that you're not really meant to pay too much attention to. Well, it's well done, too. I like that. Yeah. So, I heard uh, John Lasseter from Pixar talking about uh, part of his philosophy and he said, we sand the undersides of the drawers. So, making, a, making something nice, and even in the parts that aren't meant to be seen, it's well made. too long to thread. Maybe I'll pull a little bit less like that. Let's try it. Maybe it won't twist up as much. stitch to that
Okay, so let's trim it. Good to go. I just tuck that little knot underneath the hem, stitch it down. Yeah, I think the shorter, so shortest red and the slower pull makes it ten of a less. I think that might have been part of my problem is I was trying to use too long a thread. Which, so don't, don't go fast and don't try to use a really long thread. <laughs> Ooh, all right. Side here and uh, spread this. Let's see what we got. Okay, dude. So so far, we're. Uh, I think we're just. Just past the halfway point on that one, and it looks pretty cool. So look at that. Um, that's pretty cool. Right now, and we've already got this one done, so this will be two sides of this one complete. And uh, all right, that's kind of encouraging. But right, you know, set this aside for a minute. Yeah, it wasn't terrible. All right, so we're gonna pick up where we left off a couple minutes ago. We've got some coffee. And uh, carrying on with the uh, the hem of the flag. Stitching it down so it doesn't get uh, frayed and fall apart. And this is just steady sewing. And not a whole lot exciting, but this is a, this is a nice edge. Exciting stuff to say about it. I mean, it's uh, you know, you talk about the first ten stitches, and then the next ten thousand are the same, ideally. And that's kind of the point. Exciting stitching. It's not a whole lot to see, but that's just it. 
So I'm just kind of hanging out doing this. Here, every once in a while, someone will drop by and we can chat and shoot the breeze, but it's about all. I don't have a lot of politics to talk about or stuff like that. I'm interested in politics, but more history and stuff. And I think history and art and stuff is more in line with what I want to do with the channel. Criminals talking about. He's got uh, the civil war in Texas brewing up. I think. And he's in Ohio, so I like his style. <clears throat> Yeah, I find that hard to believe. I don't believe that. stuff. Your Joey Diaz and these guys talking about taking a whole bunch of it and really strong stuff. Maybe. Or maybe she's a nut. times, dude. That's too many. To the tune of 108. That's rage there. So. That's insane. And as the cop showed up and tried to disarm her, she she tried to tickle her carotid artery. Oh, no. With the knife. Dang. And I do love this part. They had to use a taser and several baton blows before they could finally disarm her. Yeah, she's, she's stabbing herself to death. The cop just beating the crap. Like, <laughs> She's gonna hurt herself. Electrocute her quick.
Probation, no prison time. Okay. Yes, you're looking How? at that right. She got probation. Oh my god. She was given two years of probation. Like I said, her victim didn't have anybody to stand up for him and insist on something. That's, that's insane, dude. Since nobody seems to be here, I'm going to enjoy myself here. I'm going to listen to what I want to listen to. I'm going to watch what I want to watch. And uh, that'll be that. So we're going to turn off display capture. We're going to turn the camera yeah, to max size. And I'm just going to chill out. Anybody drops in live, I don't, no, say hi no, in the chat, no, text no, me, whatever. Um, until then, I'm just going to entertain myself because... No. I'm just sewing. If somebody out. wants to so, hang out, that's cool, but this is not a designed stream. Um, you know, what is this up here? Why is this so lagged? Is it just replaying the initial standing in the community? Hmm. Well, well, what more standing can you have? She, she stabbed the guy 108 times. It's not like she's going to be at, at the Rotary Club yeah. next week giving a, you know, pre uh, you know, a, a speech wow. at the Wow. All right. There you go. She's not getting the key to the city. I mean, what, what, where is she going to get a job? A butcher shop, maybe? I don't, I don't know her profession. Nah, no standard. butcher shop. She's not efficient. Where'd that book go? Uh, she didn't suffer from severe psychosis at the time of the killing. She didn't really know what she was doing. Well, no kidding. Yeah, is, that that how, is that the standard, though? Yes. Is that a mitigating factor? Sometimes, yes. Maybe. But here's the difference, though. She was voluntarily intoxicated. Yeah, when is that ever an excuse? I mean, you get voluntarily intoxicated and get behind the wheel of a car. There's no exception for that. Walmart bought a box of brownies, and it turns out somebody had laced these brownies with pot, and then she ate them and lost her mind. That would be a voluntary intoxication. She deliberately ingested it. She's like, yeah, let's let's do some bong rips. How's that different than going to the bar and getting plastered and going out and driving? Then she stabbed somebody. It's so different than if you're going to be a doctor. Welcome. Welcome. To a she thrilling live stream of Sewing Pirate, pirate, pirate Flag. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, this is not the exciting is part not. of piracy. The exciting part is well, hoisting these well, colors, right? That's, that's the moment the of glory for the pirates, like I think. Back in 1720 or 1780 or so for this from, from particular the, uh, set that I'm copying. Almost done with just one edge. Uh, I'm just, just carrying on. I'm doing uh, doing a couple of these. So I'm gonna do all the hems, and then uh, there's a reinforcing line along the side. Let me put that up. Uh, somebody in here. I'll show you what we're up to. So let me go to. Yeah, you know what drugs are gonna do. You don't. Do that and then go Just murder one. people. Right? Okay, once again, what do I know? So here's the one I'm copying. So. Um, if she violates her probation, she'll have to so. do four years of prison time. Okay. This is the stitch I've got so far. And all this. Oh, darn, Done some of the other edges too. So cool. Just carrying yes. along till we get it all stitched up, and then then we get to the cool That's part, which is cutting out the skull and bones. And That's Attaching the rope and splicing that and uh, reinforcing it and no. putting it all together. But to get to that point, I've got to get get the thing prepped, and that's what this part is. It's not exciting, but it's. Uh, uh, says the boyfriend's family needs to but it'll be cool when it's done. done. And this this part, if it's done well, it makes the rest of it look better. 
and it keeps it from falling apart, so it's kind of um, important. Alpha Fox says, let's play Law School. Is psychosis at that level expected or anticipated is probably the argument. Sure, but there's also the assumption of the risk. If you're on a PC you're or you have a YouTube app, you can like, say hi in the chat, you got any questions? Or you might have adverse effects. Do you know what this does? No. Oh, yes. Yeah, why are you taking it? I think that's the other side of the coin there. Okay. Uh, Kitchen Rescue is saying, I don't think I've encountered that brand yet. And go, well, not the Well, you should be careful. You've got all those knives around there. Don't, don't, don't smoke weed with women in your workshop. They, yeah, they, might take, they might take, yeah. Let me stretch this out. So, uh, Swiss Guard, for $2, I can sir. I'm sure you can. Just stay away from uh, CBD, I think. Although, you know, I did know a girl, a so young woman, she was in grad school so, at the again, time. I don't think this was just regular cannabis. Ooh, uh, <clears throat> part of the was, it was just weird. Well, to be fair, I don't know if she was high that night. I know she spoke pot, but it did uh, Keep in mind, freak out, part of this put, her, is the issue put her fist through a glass door. So, I suspect it's got more to do That's with some kind of mental illness than being stunned. Yeah, but wonderful Galaxy says she watches anime and one of these. She just got probation for killing a guy like oh, that. No. In any way, like oh no. I, mean, I think people, oh, no. you know, get more time for running somebody over in a car or a motorcycle or something, don't they? That's wild. Um, Pitchlock is saying since we didn't fall, you think she got the munchies? Yeah, did she take a bite? Mm. I mean, the 108 stabs, like, bits of, like, chunks of flesh had to come off somewhere. You know, think she picked one up and, like, threw it on the, threw it on the, threw it in the pot. It was like a hibachi. So. Mm -hmm. Just got a couple inches. It's about three and a half inches left to do on this one hand. Here's this, can we this side. Court record? Yeah, I think that'd be an interesting one to see, but I don't think it was broadcast anywhere. back down we were just about to do this the was going around the issue of the US private vaults company oh yeah that's because a raid out in California it. but it's been a long time now it's been it's, no, we're gonna go it's just been many, many raid all these private safety deposit boxes without probable cause and, and this is a company and an organization out in California who did private safety deposit boxes so you can hmm. see there there is the private vaults US private and they did a setup where you had a private safety deposit box. And the neat part about it was 
They didn't want to know a damn thing about it. And I'm not joking. Their, their job is not to ask you what's in it. They don't care what's in it. Store okay. stuff in there. We don't control access to it. You just pay us to have access. You pay us to rent the box. Well, Seems reasonable. What's not to love? That sounds pretty good. You know, it's all on download. There's not a lot of over... There's not oversight. Right, another one okay. done. Two. We've got one more on this side, but we've got two well, done on this part. And, uh, that's kind of cool. Already. And if you guys have never seen this, this is an actual picture of the private vaults, uh, one of their Wait. areas. Here. This is one of their areas. This is them tearing it all apart. So they went ahead and got a search warrant. Now, their search warrant was... The guys who ran the company, Private Vaults, were alleged to have been soliciting criminals. Oh. Okay, money laundering, drug trafficking, drug dealing, all kinds of stuff where you'd want like an off-the-books deposit box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it turns out they actually sure. were really doing that. The guys who ran the company were doing that. They got in trouble for money laundering. They got in trouble for a couple different crimes. So no, they just did it. So. It's not a smart way to go about things. The other problem, though, was... A lot of regular citizens stored private belongings there. Yeah, I mean, you've got crooks. So to them and this is the one where we talked about before. Water, everybody. The federal agents involved in this case lied, and they said this was all for bad guys. Oh. And the FBI raided. Well, that was dumb. Why would they do that? The FBI raided. Um, and they seized everything. They ripped all the boxes out of the out of the out of the wall, and they opened them all. Now they claimed they were inventorying stuff. It's none of your business. But immediately, if you had more than five thousand dollars, what's the inventory? And then you had other things like watches, watches and other high, high price items. Is there an inventorying exception to the Fourth Amendment? I don't think so. Found, found Never heard of it. Yeah, I need 
I've never heard of them before. Um, I know Steve Lato and uh, so. any John Bright, civil rights lawyer, have mentioned them before, plugged them before. Okay. They they run the you know the ACLU if they were actually gave a crap about things. So you guys can support them. You can donate to them. This is the Institute for Justice. You can um, you can support them. They will take donations. You can donate online. Um, you don't have to contribute a lot. Whatever you're willing to contribute, but it's you know the money allows them to send all these attorneys out to go do all the fighting and get these results and protect people. So just something to think about if you're interested. So uh, and I just point out here because well, it's like one of the parts of justice. A couple other ones here who work for the Institute for Justice. Um, there's a bunch of them that were involved. So just just important stuff going on there. You know, please take a look and see what they're doing. It, it's very good what they do. Okay. But yes, it was the 760 deposit boxes that were inventory. Uh, including the nests. But the nests are those little, the, the frames that they all sit in. Uh, the warrant issued by the magistrate did not authorize a criminal search or seizure of the box contents. Yeah, so could the FBI look through them and say, okay, yeah, it's Bob Bobberson, you own this. Then you contact and say, hey, man, come get your stuff. Not, hey, we're going to seize your items. Because that's, that's what the FBI did. They stole everything. Uh, that was the problem here. Uh, you know, these people who are listed above, they made claims to, to get their property returned. Um, the government refused to return it, and... They sought to simply forfeit it instead, because it's dead. Eventually, the government came everything right back and said, oh, well, can we, can, we, uh, can we have it all back? And the government said, sure, please leave us alone. Well, everything was documented. So there are records, and it's stored in a program called Sentinel, which the government has access to and will continue to have access to. That's not cool. You can't do so that. The issue there, and we'll get into... They talked about, and the government did actually have an investigation in the U.S. private vaults. Okay. Now, okay, so they're corrupt, but that doesn't mean that their customers are. They do talk about what happened there, but there is, if you read through what happened at the trial court level, the uh, FBI did a lot of perjury, it sounds like, based on what happened. So, the bigger problem was how were these boxes inventory? Um, They did their own policies, basically. You know, they say that at this point they must conduct a prompt and thorough search of the contents of the property, including any locked or unlocked containers and inventory of the contents. Okay. You know, they must include, but also description of the property. Yeah, because if we find it, we can say, hey, we found this here. It's just like a normal inventory. The, the argument is like an inventory search in a car. Oh, well, I had a Picasso in the backseat. Why didn't you inventory that? Well, no, that's why the police can pull up their inventory and say, look, dude, we found a bunch of Burger King wrappers and a broken cigarette lighter. They also point out in the court sites that the provisions for doing documentation, it can't be done solely for investigative purposes. Um, whenever there's probable cause to believe inventory search would yield items of evidence or contraband, the agents must obtain a search warrant when feasible. Okay. So why is this a problem here? Well, we get down to the court's reasoning of this, and it's actually very, very good. The court just thumps these guys. Um, and they just beat on them. And one of the biggest things the court points out is, hey, you guys are worried, like, oh, we don't have time to get warrants. You've seized the building and all the stuff inside the building. You have a bunch of armed agents there. It's not like you get all run away. Yeah, what if they got milk in and there? That's though, the court out. But the court starts out by stating that there were problems with the warrant itself, and it was too broad. Um, and this violated an inventory search um, because there were no standardized policies. Now, a standardized policy, and they talk about this with an inventory search doctrine, is normally like cars getting hit. Okay, well, does it have to be a written down standard? No, but it's the same standard applied.
applied every time, yes. Um, standardized has to be limiting officer discretion, and it applies equally and consistently. Well, what do we find out? That there was no reason. Uh, these guys basically made their own inventory policy for this raid. So they violated the district court's warrant. Should have just so limited the themselves had a, uh, to the scope of the warrant. And not only I mean, they summarizing have that what problem. was there, uh, but they talk about how do they preserve the evidence. They tag the items of forfeiture number to set up the evidence control and take care to preserve the evidence for fingerprints. So, yes, the FBI said, oh, we're just looking for stuff. You know, they played themselves, and the trial court didn't. No. Uh, the government's also confirmed that the boxes, the contents could be used to investigate. Crimes and they were stored on a database called Sentinel, kept indefinitely. Hmm. The government already used some of this information to weird. go do more investigations. Well, so uh, and they talked about the FBI did right? its own findings to show that a criminal seizure of the boxes, yet somehow it thought it was okay. And they abused and the court abused its discretion and they turned overturned it. Hmm. So as the court goes on and on and on here, it does get ultimately to the issue of the district court's order, which the Fourth Amendment was not violated, is reversed. Um, the FBI is ordered, and they, you know, have the district nope, court nope, order nope. the FBI to sequester the or destroy the records. I think they go too fast. It tends to not. Now, now here's the thing, guys. Here, here's the thing. Yep, here's the 
that's the trick there. I'm just go slower. I want to go faster. Let, 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 let's be real here. Let, let's be Time's real. Here. Yeah, right, just to like say the apartment owner was under investigation. That doesn't give you the right to go into each apartment. It said, I will hold the inventory search doctrine does not extend to searches of boxes or contents in a locked vault. So we just started a couple minutes ago on this line, and uh, this no, you got about like, no, you seven look, inches or so. so there should be no inventory along. search of any of that. It shouldn't exist at all. It's not bad. There would be no reason for an inventory search. This Doesn't is a tedious, matter, probably the most tedious part of the whole job. Once this is and done, I, I, I get to I do the fun agree. stuff, the cutting out the skull and bones and painting them, and putting, the, the, putting the rope the, in uh, on the sides. And which is very impressive that these judges were not extending But this is necessary, so... Want to do a good job it's of good it. to see it warms your heart it warms your heart to get the tedious part out of the way they, they should go to jail yeah that, that'd be nice that'd be nice but that doesn't they're feds you do not want to you know, in, our, in our dreams in our dreams sadly Captain Cromwell says she'll be promoted instead of reprimanded oh I'm sure she did I'm sure she did I'm sure she did Doesn't pretty much every piece of currency have some sort of drug residue on it? Yes, yes, it does. Everybody says that. But and remember, it's a dog sniffing it, so like if you ate food and you touched it, or you touched your dog and you touched that money, who knows what he's smelling? Who knows smell what he's whatever smelling? his handler wants him to smell. The galaxy's saying, oh, what was the original reason why they went to those boxes? They went to those boxes to go after it because the people running the program or running the business were actively going out and courting criminal activity. We'll don't do that. So what those guys did was illegal, but there were a lot of innocent people using it for legal purposes. Uh, the demon rat says, uh, the demon rat says, the information the feds took won't ever get deleted. How do you rectify that? Department of Furniture? Lies. Oh, no. I know. I know. So. No. Um. Yes, wonderful galaxy. Yes, the FBI is correct. All of our citizens are criminals. That's, that. you joke. You joke, that's how they look at it, man. 
sure they would have tried. I'm sure they would have tried. So. Hmm. All right. That's pretty cool. Kent's counseling couch is the only legitimate agency in the ATF. The ATF meeting aid for its feds. This is a joke, I would say. Does it, it doesn't have to be a joke. Okay. That's pretty cool. It looks nice. Starting to feel more solid too. The more this gets on here, than the, the whole thing. All right, that looks pretty nice, right? I think so. Oh, yeah. And this oh yeah, it looks pretty good. Oh, that? Nice hand. Can't wait to see this flapping in the breeze on my scoop of war. Okay, I don't have a scoop of war, but I have a digital one that I built. It's like being in the So I want to make a. Digital version of this for black powder game. And I just found out that I've been developing a game for, well, for fun for about, I don't know, since 2008 or 9. That's when I first had the dream of it and started building some of the models that I'm using in it. But I mean, really, only seriously, only in the last year or two. But, I'm calling it black powder. I just found out that there's another game called Black Power. It's a tabletop game or something. Mine's completely digital. Totally different game. I don't know that I can use that name. I'm going to have to look into that. Or come up with a and then probably come up with a new name. Which kind of stinks because I actually built the whole game around Black Power. Like that's the important so. commodity. It's the MacGuffin, and it's the actual driver of the action. He says so right there his business card, he's a bad guy like recruiter. That. Jeff, how you doing? Gonna have to get an guys, education in copyright law, I guess. Uh, you guys can find him over at Legal Vice here on YouTube. And uh, then get creative and give a look if you had the chance come up with a new, but, new name, I guess. Yes, yes, he's a bad guy recruiter. I suppose I could do that. I mean, uh, I just like the name. Plus, I'm attached to it, so I've been using time. it for years, the FBI is just privately one, for my mom. Uh, the FBI is really good at foiling F, uh, terror I, plots well, started by the it. FBI. That's how good the FBI is. Probably should have done something so, public with yes, it. Maybe you did. Yes. I should find so out when that other case. game developed. Yeah, maybe it really I do does, have a, doesn't it? Makes, makes you think. Uh, yeah. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Maybe I have a leg to stand on there. I don't want to dispute with him. Every time, it's always an FBI agent who's making the bombs. Like theirs is like cars or something. Like rule, not maybe a board game. Yep. That's the sad part. That's the sad part. Mine's just an open world adventure on the computer. Um, so, and I have been at, at it for a while. I have to go back and find the first public uh, use of it. And some sort of the informant had a little company left when it does. And they started using their name. Well, here's the thing. A lot of times the Fed informants are absolute scumbags. Just make it clear that and this is a bad thing. And they because now they have basically well, everybody's happy. immunity. Because I don't want them as to long as they keep producing, the change their protect name. Them. I don't want to change mine. So it's just something to think about there. So when you hear about the Fed informants, they're generally they games. Maybe horrible, they're cool. horrible people. Where's the people they claim to be going after? We'll out. figure it out. I do have the audio so, on, right? I'm going to ramble. I might as well be... Yep. Eric says the other three were released years before this guy. Ramble yeah, on. A couple years ago, but still. Um, because those were those guys had the least culpability in this whole here. thing. But now it's clear this guy had no culpability. Because why so. not? Yeah, good job, FBI. Charlie says the FBI is framing people. You're talking about January 6th, right? We can throw that in there, sure. Oh boy. Oh, that is. Kind of makes you wonder about the Oklahoma City bombing. Oh, it makes you wonder about a lot of things, including that one, yes. Tell me yes, it does make you wonder about a lot of things, very true. The Murrah building? Um, Woosie for $2, thank you. you. Put that is saying, guy up to please, them? more ex, ex. I did think it was weird that they managed to execute him so fast. Explaining? Yeah. 
serial killers on death row for 20 years, but Tim McVeigh got killed right away. Jeffrey Epstein. I'm tired of. Uh, oh yes. I like it better when I was a kid. Was the January 6th thought, Hussein, yeah. Well, it's yeah. the government. They're cool. Which makes you wonder how big the scumbag Ray Epps is at the end of the day. Doing because good. Why? Why? Why did they? Why did they pick him? Why did they pick him? I don't know. I don't it's know. Much more. Pleasant. All remote. I don't know. All right, so. So. See, somebody's dropped in. Welcome to the stream. Okay, so. So in the hem on the pirate this flag, one I was or as I was joking earlier, the, the French flag. True. As soon as this is done, I'm using black thread. And when this is done, I'm going to be uh, but it's also uh, dyeing this black. I mean, and then I'll cut out the bones and the skull and sew them on. So in Oklahoma, uh, they are so going to, they have a bill that uh, furries would be picked up from school by their parents at animal control. Oh, what's going on Yes, here? because nobody likes furries. And yes. Gotta untangle this. Bats get the wall, furries thread? get the here leash. We go. So, this is, this is a real thing. This is a real thing. He filed a bill that's targeting right. furries or people in a subculture interested in anthropomorphic animal characters in Oklahoma schools. Well, I'm interested in pirates of the 18th century, but so it doesn't mean animals. So, it would to uh, purport to be an imaginary animal or animal species. But they um, won't purport to be a pirate. So I guess that's the difference. Oh, that is so funny. Um, it required parents or guardians to pick up, it, pick them up in the school. But if they can't, uh, animal control shall be reinforced to remove the student. Oh, uh, people are so freaking weird, man. This is too much luxury. I don't understand why goals society is this is doing very this. Admirable, so. uh, I don't think it's going to go anywhere, but it'd be hilarious it's not good. to So, watch your back, there is not good. That, that would be a lot of fun for them to look back through history, and any time there's this kind of licentiousness, that would be a lot of fun. And indulgence of weirdness. You know, I, mean, I, I think you can look at that and you say space. I mean, yeah, I think so. Collapse. Was story based? And misery for everyone. So. Yeah, it was pretty based. It's pretty based. I guess we're just in for it. That's all. <laughs> Durgan says, Yappo, yip around and find out. I says, I should read the entire bill. I couldn't <clears throat> find it right away. And I mean, if I can find Hold on here, let's see. All right. So I'm almost to the end of this thread. I found out that if I See, use if I a shorter actual... thread, it doesn't tangle as often. So text I have to change it more often. I prefer just to thread my needle once and stitch the whole thing. But I end up going just as slowly overall because I have to uh, stop and untangle it every so often, which I don't like. Watch it. Hold on here. I think I found the bill. A couple of times on the other one, it broke. So it ended up costing me time. It seemed, seems like, or seemed at the time like an easier way to do it, but, and I, actually I can get away with it with the, uh, the heavy linen okay. twine that I was using. Actually, yeah, we do have a copy of the bill. For this fine cotton thread, it doesn't work. So, so here we go. I'm just got to work slow let's, and let's steady, Let's read this bill real quick. Let's read the bill. Gives less error. Let me re this. It's only two pages. That'll help. a full bit. So, it's a, a prohibition on certain things. I'm sure when this guy became, you know, a legislator, he thought, I'm going to help protect the people and do things to limit government. Now he's going after the furries. Okay, students who purport to be an imaginary animal or animal species who engage in anthropomorphic behavior referred to as furries should not be allowed to participate. Uh, the parent or guardian of a furry oh, shall on. pick them up for this school. Kind of rolling here. Or animal control services shall be no, contacted like to remove the student. This shall be effective November 1st, 2024. I love that. You know what, though? I will say, I love the fact it's nice. It's short. It's one page bill. You understand what's in it. You understand what's going on. You know, that, that's what we should aim for in life. 
That's what we should aim for in life. We should be we should want our legislators to do this and do the right thing. Till he says sign that shit in the law, yes. So you know, like I said, it, it's hard, you know, all the things we want, they're doing. I think we're past the halfway point on this line. It's not bad. Okay, we have... Hmm. Updates in the Fannie Willis issues over in... over in Georgia. Right. A lot of problems starting to arise for Fannie. I think, actually, this is starting to twist up a lot. I'm going to switch thread right now. Fannie Willis, the district attorney out of Fulton County, Georgia, is prosecuting Trump and everybody for RICO. In in their uh, involvement in the election. Now, she's had a lot of problems because she's kind of corrupt. And it turns out her boyfriend was hired to be a special prosecutor with no experience, um, and he gets a bill of $250 an hour and is... Billed at least from what people know, given the sketchy billing practices, around like seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, if not close to a million. Oh, but it's not clear. So, what do we do with that? Well, that makes an issue of was she also being enriched with that money? Because there are allegations that well, sure. he was taking her vacations. And... They were going out partying. There you go. With the money she used to pay him, which not a good idea. Is now enriching her. Seems well, like okay, let's tie these together. This is not looking good for Fanny. Fanny's having a rough day. I am. Because it's, it, the hits just keep coming. So the Georgia prosecutor um, on the case of the trips, uh, the special prosecutor, uh, on his credit card. So there, there's credit card receipts. Well, that's good. This is not good. This is Fanny if you've never seen her. You know, smartest woman in the room. Yeah, probably um, not. So there's proof that he bought tickets for her to accompany him on two out-of-state trips. Mm-hmm. Dude. And this is all a result of Nathan Wade, the special prosecutor, having a divorce case. Oh, yeah, he's not even divorced. He's and running, his so he's ex-wife is running like, around wait, with a married... where's all this money coming from? I want to know. You haven't accounted for it all. Oh. So Fanny's getting undone yeah. by this guy's divorce case. Well. But he purchased airline tickets for him and Fanny Willis, um, including trips to Miami and uh, San Francisco. And now the county government's launching an inquiry into whether or not she misused county funds and accepted gifts and benefits from this guy. He almost called this. kickback, and I think he would. Yeah, I think so. That's a little better camera angle, I think. Right? You could also say this is a this is racketeering. But well, wouldn't that be ironic? Fraud is what could be considered a predicate act. So if you're trying to file RICO charges, you know, Fanny, Fanny may have actually done the RICO on herself while trying to go after Trump for a RICO. Well. Good job, Fanny. You know, well, if that's not a Reddit moment there, I don't know what is. No. So. She is going to get deposed. And that's the thing for the divorce hearing because the husband was never deposed yet. But because of all that, now she can be deposed by what she knows. Man. <laughs> so, what a mess. this is, uh. What would a society without corruption look like? Oh, is there ever been in, one? In the meantime, her remember, records, uh. Like in history, sorry, have there ever been. This week, governments the order for her to be deposed, which came out on Friday, is now on hold. So we're waiting now to figure out what's going to happen. But it's a good chance Penny Wilson's going to have to sit for a deposition. And she's going to have to explain all of this. And there's not going to be a way for her to do that. And remember, she's under oath. So this isn't going to look good when your prosecutor's acting like a scumbag. So I would argue 
think that's one of the bigger things going Slow on in the case steady, right now. And I've said this before. This is a perfect past, example of what's going on in these cases. The halfway point of this one, so this one's almost done, and then we can switch to the other. And uh, so we will see what happens. We'll have these done tonight. Fading. I'm sure it's not tomorrow. We're we'll getting the uh, black, the black dye, and dye in black. Yeah. And while they're drying, we will cut the skull and bones out. Able to help her anymore. Then we can uh, we can sew them on. There's this way too much cool. heat on this one. She's in really trouble. Neat. This is the most. Um, uh, Charlie says, "Have we watched anything about this?" Is actually Kenyard an important part of it because this is actually we creating the flag ago, itself. When she would would answer why they were spending like until it gets him, it's just like a piece of fabric. Dollar lobster dinners when they were going to Las Vegas and whatnot. We we covered that a little bit. I guess I should have gone into the public office and worse worse and basically never been to Las Vegas and had a lobster dinner. Yes, only fannies. It's kind of weird. It's like all these Justin Hancock trucks saying, yeah, she's moving up to the British slang. Turn. Seem to have really Fanny. nice lives. Fanny does not mean butt in England. It means cunt. So yes. Not, uh... If, somebody, if you call somebody a fanny in, uh... Not other people. Britain, it's not the same thing. But if you talk about your fanny, kind of. that's not the same thing. It doesn't seem right. So. Oh, and damn, says, that's Senator too fast. You gotta go slow. Yeah, too Remember, fast. Remember, it's spread out over a couple of years now. Too fast. Slow, slow, slow. So it doesn't tangle. There we go. Now I'm going to untwist this. These, somehow, uh, as I twist, yes, as I'm sewing this, you it seems to twist up. You got to test that down the line for justice. Yeah. Or justice. I don't know why, but. I think it's just the way it stitches. It goes around and around and then so let's see, becomes a whirl again. Mr. Sager says, can you clean the fifth of the deposition? Um, at times, yes. Um, it's a little tougher in civil situations, but you can still, yes, if you feel like it's going to. But at the moment she does that, the jig's up. Yeah, she can't. I mean, the practically she does that, speaking. Jigged up. Yeah. She yes, does Walter that, Malone it's practically says, yes, the admission of guilt that she's going to yeah, be she out did. of it. She did when you think about Her it. Her case is going to collapse. It's weird. What a mess. You'd think somebody who really thought that they were saving the Republic by so, bringing charges against the former president and you know, this, so this is, innovative case because it's so important to that's what's going on there. justice. Which could happen to a nicer keep her nose clean. Could happen to a nicer you know, baby. like you just say, listen, man, I can't do any of this. I'd love to hire you, but we're involved and I've got to avoid even the appearance of impropriety, let alone going with you to uh, Las Vegas and having lobster dinners. Now, this one, I didn't realize was such Come a on. big thing with, well, so I'm pretty sure this would be like a white lady thing, a white so woman thing we've here. We've got but stuff to do that's actually important. This Stanley Cup stuff. I didn't realize that there was a brand of, like, these are basically like a Yeti competitor. Yeah, I thought they were talking about hockey. At first, I'm like, why do all these white women like fucking hockey all of a yep. sudden? Same but thing. they want Stanley Cups, like... Like okay, Stanley whatever. Tools? Like, hey, is interest in hockey is an interest in hockey. Company, I think. Apparently there's a Stanley brand cup company and these white women, they go crazy for them. So, uh, it's probably an a lady was accused of stealing simple. 65 of these value at 2500 bucks. What? Which? I'm not charging enough yeah. for my artwork. That's yeah, for that's sure. That's Holy good crap. Stuff. That's some good stuff there. Um, she also got a DUI at the same time she did. Mass produced public the cups. plastic cups. So good job. Um, good job there, Delaney. Uh, and here's what she stole: all these cups. Why? Which that's twenty five hundred dollars right there. I, I, hey, I guess. For plastic cups. To keep your cold stuff cold and your hot stuff hot. Okay. I don't even think people were this crazy about the Yeti stuff. At Yeti got big, but hey, who knows? <laughs> but that's a lot of them. <laughs> that's a lot of cups. That that's just a lot. I don't know where those all go. So <laughs> you know what? I think I need to put up some short videos and some regular videos. You know yeah, what? So I should do the one on Brahms tomorrow. Love that. Well, the quenchers are all the rage. We strongly suggest you don't turn to so cry. I'm going to do it tomorrow. My grommet video goes up tomorrow. To fill your hydration habit. Although I'd be 
funny. I might it's actually, because I did do it while I was sewing the tent. Maybe I can just extract it from that. I'll have to see about how to uh, use that later. Crap. Uh, just tie not in this. Untie this. How do you do it? It's 45 bucks. Jeez. And they're all over TikTok. Well, that's why that's white women are all about this. Oh, these were once marketed outdoors, man. Okay. I mean, if you want it, I mean, it's a good cup, I guess, but. Cups of, uh. Seems excessive. Become so prevalent, kids are bullying their Damn friends it. for not having Stanley's. Oh, uh, this is terrible. It's a terrible, terrible problem. Yeah, she's got, that's a lot of them. That's. You know what, though? Maybe I could just move. There we go. Solve Damn. the problem. I'm just going to move this knot up. Well, I guess. Will that not only Stanley's, you can fill the back well, of the Maybe I can move it down. What I don't want is for it to break, because oh, well. I'm almost done with this line of him here. Uh, Let's see if it'll go through. Damn it. Okay, see here, I guess. There's counterfeit iterations of the item, and it's not to be confused with the coveted National Hockey League trophy. Yes, the... For, if you yeah, the for $45, National you can League have League the, uh, the, playoffs. the National Hockey League trophy. You get the Stanley Cup. You get Lord Stanley's You get the big one. Sure. People it's the best ball, trophy right? in sports. All right, that's better. Got the knot out accidentally. Yeah, apparently people really like these. Wow. Wow, okay. Huh. Well, good job, white women. Y'all be... Y'all be doing your thing, I guess. Thank you. Hmm. Stanley Miss Good Tape Measures is... I don't, is, I don't think it's the same company. So, don't do TikTok, yeah. John says, I've had my old green Stanley coffee thermos for 30 years. Ah, interesting. Interesting. I didn't know they'd been around forever, but I'm cool. Zero says, I cut my fentanyl. Yes, until he says, uh, Jeff started this shit, didn't he? Jeff, did you do this? Is this your fault? Did you get all these white women wanting Stanley Cups? Yes, because I've been drinking from Stanley Glass for ages. Cool. All right. Yeah. After you work it for a while, the uh, thing comes in full and sometimes really well. you have to fix it. We're almost to the end well, of this Monty line. Well, says it's the thermos slash Stanley. Oh, okay, well... Thermos, that, yeah, Thermos has been around forever. Okay. Okay. Dermot says that's a Karina, not a Karen. She could be a white Hispanic. So, she could still be a Karen. <clears throat> Something pulled over the Avon lady. Yes, twenty five hundred dollars in Sydney cups. Um uh, oh, I see this Jim. We'll talk about that um at the end real quick. Same company, yes. Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So they make thermos. Jamrock says, not all white women are white in the majority, yes, but not all. Well, most of these problems are white women generated, so it's easy enough that it's probably their fault. <sighs> the Stanley business opened in 1913. Hmm. Oh, wow. Hmm. Some amazing so, longevity. Scott X says, it's worth the leech to metals. We haul away. Oh, and here's the thing. The man, the manly colors are at normal prices. Okay. 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 Hmm. All right. Well, that's good to know. I was just wondering what the hell that was all about because... All right. We're down to the I bad. Didn't know. Good I didn't at this know. corner. And then oh. when it's secured, then we... Just, I still have one more on this one to do and then the reinforcing. So... We almost have a flag here. This is exciting. That thrilling. Was, that was, yeah, like I said, I just, I just didn't know. I just didn't know. Um, real quick, I guess we'll, we'll go to the one that we start, that, that people started the show up tonight. Hmm. Bringing up, and I didn't know anything about, but we'll, we'll look into it now, is 
is with the WWE. Ah. So, Vince McMahon is accused of sexual abuse and uh, trafficking in a lawsuit by a former employee. Of course. So, a former employee of the WWE, Sue McMahon, alleging he abused her. And it's like, you know, he abused her by... I'll go up to her and say, yes! Mr. McMahon, do you want... How much coffee do you want? Do you want coffee today? Yes! Oh, I want coffee. Okay. You're fired! I'm sure that's done a lot. I'm there you go. I'm sure that could have been a cringy issue. Okay, man. But the WWE employee... Janelle Grant filed a lawsuit uh, naming John, John Laurinaitis as a Okay, well, what are they claiming they did? Laurinaitis? Is it, uh... Well, they're claiming they violated the Trafficking Victims Prevention Act, which includes claims to civil battery, and that she endured those while she was there. Okay. Uh, she claimed there's a non disclosure agreement. That she signed, but she claimed it's void and unenforceable. It doesn't bar any of the signed here. So let's see, you know, and there's a link, so let's take a look at this. That's weird. Okay. Why would you so, sign it if it's unenforceable and void? The District Court for Connecticut. In Connecticut's small enough, they only have one court. All right, let's see what we got here. It's 67 pages. Oh my God. Let's take a look. <sighs> well, all right. Where are we here? All right. Can't all see right, this here thing. we go. Okay. World Wrestling Entertainment Incorporated. Cool. All right, we got a new thread ready. All right. Let me get uh, Vincent K. McMahon. All right, Janelle Grant. To the side. Introduction. <laughs> okay, uh, Vincent McMahon lived in a penthouse in her apartment building. Hmm. The two met March 2019. Mrs. Grant was dealing with profound grief and struggling financially. Uh, so she was devoting years around the clock caregiving. Her parents passed. Top of that, she was unemployed. And her family home was lost in the bankruptcy. After her family passed away, she dedicated herself to finding gainful employment. Well, that, that's kind of normal. Neighbors in her building provided career All right, we have assistance. at least one corner done. Um, she used these non paying roles. <laughs> Pretty cool. And, work in the community to build a and this is a cellar, and this is going to get folded over to uh, form the building's reinforcement. resident manager wanted to help. So it'll stitch down this way. Um, the road will pass through here. There'll be a, a loop here for the uh, to attach. And then we have a flag. The lady texted. So she messaged Vince to ask whether he talked to her. And Vince responded, Oh, yes. Uh, he befriended her, giving her hopes of a new life. Okay. Um, showered with attention and assurances. Um, um, it gives like an experience in WrestleMania. Cool. What seemed like a dream became a nightmare. As a man of career making and promises in front of her, he demonstrated a lack of boundaries during several meetings that were obsessively about a potential job. He greeted her in his underwear. All right, he's trying to get laid, right? Ooh, there's two of us, man. Several meetings, several right. meetings. This is still one more needs to be done, yeah. After the first one, she wasn't like, I'm out, I'm out, sorry, I'm done. Yeah, how do you uh, not get sketched out the first time? Well, maybe that was... You know, that, like, yeah, well, wasn't yeah, like I said, yeah, I'm not trying to pick the blame here, but like, at one point, you're like, yeah, I'm out, fam. Okay, this I'll touch her repeatedly, ask for hugs, aww. Right. Well, well she was grieving, he's asking for hugs, right. and spent is, hours sharing uh, intimate details about his personal life, okay? Like this what? This is the main one. So like what? Sure like one. what? Um, he said, while he protects a lot of people, he wants to keep everything quiet. He had world-class legal resources on speed dial to deal with people who became a problem. Well, he does. Uh, he pushed for a bit. She's claiming he pushed for a physical relationship. Okay. She felt trapped. Dude. So many of the demands are facing ruin. She was already facing ruin. So, yeah, she feared she had everything to lose. Um, um, you dated the guy and it didn't work out. Basically, and get the consequences no matter what happened. Well... Why would you give in? Why, if you're going to get screwed no matter what happens, it's really like sketchy. To fail. I guess I don't know. We're not making much sense here. We're not making much sense here. It's kind of weird and sketchy. So, we're not making a ton of sense here. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. But what do I know? All right. So, she started working in the, uh, ironically, she was 
slotted to an entry-level position uh, created for her in the legal department. That's kind of ironic. Um, in that role, so the guy she, uh, created the job for you to help you out. Relations, out. Relations. The Relationship okay. went bad. That's During kind of the conversation same day, your press legal department was effectively... All right, well, I'm going to resume this in a little while. I'm going to got to stretch and take a break. But I'll be back yeah, on with more exciting sewing pirate flag action.